Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today I am flying solo. I am excited that 2024 is upon us and I'm very excited to be here today to talk to you. So today I'm going to be reviewing 2023 and giving you some insights into what's been happening for us and what's coming up. But also, and more importantly, I am going to be sharing with you some simple steps so that you can set up 2024 in a way that's going to serve you who you are today and who it is you want to continue to become so that you can essentially live the lifestyle that you want to be living in a way that is aligned to your values and is aligned to what matters to you all right so first things first then 2023 how was 2023 for you have you even thought about it? Have you taken any time yet to sit back and reflect and look at perhaps what was the essence of the year? What was the theme of the year? Are there any little milestones or accomplishments that you can look back on and, and really cherish? What were the highlights for you? And what can you perhaps learn from some of the lowlights? If you haven't yet done a little reflection, I would highly, highly encourage you to do so because we can't always know where we're going until we know where we're coming from, right? And this heightened level of awareness when we look back and reflect, you know, it, it really helps us to, to find our stride more quickly as we move into a new year. Now, I've always been, for anybody who's been listening to this podcast for a long time, I've always been somebody that I, I love to achieve, right? I love to set goals. I love to achieve them. I, I'm always like trying to go somewhere and, and do something. And over the years, I've learned how to balance that yang energy of go, 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 go with a little bit of yin in a way that... I can relax and enjoy the process a lot more than perhaps what I used to. And I know for a lot of people listening, you know, you can relate to that. You know, we, we're we all typically on, on one end of that spectrum, right? We are go, 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 want to achieve everything and we want to achieve it yesterday. Or perhaps we're on the other end of the spectrum. We know we want to achieve certain things, but we don't get going perhaps in the way that we want to. And, and it was interesting is when I speak to so many different people within our community is that often we want a bit of what the other person has, right? So for people that are go, 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 we're like, oh, I wish I could have that energy and that drive. But yet the people that have got that energy and drive, like, I wish I could maybe slow down and, and enjoy this process a little bit more than, uh, than what I am, right? So I always find it quite interesting that we always want something that somebody else perhaps has. But what we really need to be aware of is that both of those traits and those characteristics do actually live inside of us right already and we just need to find that sweet spot so when we reflect on the year that's been we find that sweet spot a lot faster because we can look and we can learn and we can then take that learning into the year ahead so even if you're somebody that wants to strive and achieve what I'm going to share with you today will be helpful and it will keep you grounded and centered in the way to do it. And if you are somebody that perhaps you've got some ideas of what you want, but you're not quite sure how to break it down and to, to move in those small steps to achieve it, then this is for you too. Okay. So for 2023, let's just give you a little backdrop into what's been going on here obviously you've been listening to the podcast I think I think it was like end of June July I did a little update for you so you know kind of what's been happening um, but for those of you that perhaps don't is you know Jonathan and I um, obviously Jonathan for those people that perhaps are new is my husband and business partner and you name it in life he is it um, and he is typically here hosting this podcast with me but this year we've been on quite the adventure which is one of the reasons why he's not here today so for those of you that are aware we actually were in Thailand for the last couple of years um, and in January of this year we moved back to the UAE we moved back to Abu Dhabi so it's been a transition of country yet again and setting up um, our home here in Abu Dhabi and we're very very happy to be back we've really been enjoying it but along the journey you know we, we've had to really stay honed in on what we set out of what on what we wanted to do at the start of the year so it's very apt that we're, we're having this conversation now because you know I had to really sit down and reflect at the start of last year or the end of last year into the start of this year and figure out what is it do I want when it comes to what I want to achieve throughout the year or what do I want to be moving towards right because we all need to be moving towards something 
if we're not, we can sort of wander, right? And when we wander and, and we're doing it almost aimlessly, we can find ourselves in a place where perhaps we don't feel a sense of belonging or we don't feel like we're progressing. We don't feel like we're growing. And if we don't feel like we're growing, in essence, there's only one other way to go from that, right? Is we, we end up feeling like something is, is lost, right? We start losing a part of ourself, right? So on that journey, we might feel stuck, but when we're in that place of feeling stuck, we're going to go one way or the other. So I encourage you to perhaps think about where are you now? Do you feel like you're losing a part of yourself? Do you feel a bit lost? Do you feel stuck? Do you feel like you're growing and moving in the right direction? Because at the start of this year, for me, I, I knew that I needed to move into more of a growth phase of my life rather than a, a, a static, consistent phase, which I feel like I'd been in for a while and even with our business. And, you know, we made the choice to really focus on expansion right within our business but also personally as well so one of the ways in which I was able to stay centered and grounded through this year was to set some goals so personally you know I've been able to achieve um, a, a 10,000 step average to keep me active I knew I couldn't do anything quite adventurous as like kayaking around the Thai islands that I did last year I knew that I needed to rein it in a little bit for this year but I also knew that I wanted to stay healthy and well so I was like what simple thing could I do that will keep me on that path and keep me growing and that was to do 10,000 steps a day on, on average over the whole year month on month and I've been able to do that all right well she says as of now it's like December mid-December now as I'm recording this so by the end of the year I'll make sure that I've, I've definitely done that um, for sure now with regards to um, the big move to Abu Dhabi, that was obviously a goal that we'd set as well that we wanted to do at the start of this year, which was kind of done and checked. I also had the opportunity to go and do another uh, the Vipassana experience, which is a silent meditation, uh, which, again, those of you that have been following me for a while knows it's a practice that I've been leaning into for many years now. However, you go away um, on some of these retreat style experiences and you have 10 days in complete silence uh, no pens, no paper, just you, yourself and this meditation practice. And this was a goal of mine to, to do again because I felt like I lost traction in my practice over the last couple of years. So that was another great milestone personally for me. I've been fortunate enough to be able to spend quality time with family, both in the UK and now here in the UAE as well. So that was another personal milestone for me um, or a, a memorable experience that I really, really cherish. and. And kick it, uh, ending this year with um, a challenge that both Jonathan and I have been doing. We set a goal um, just three months to get as lean and as strong as we can and um, just so that we can feel really ready for the new year ahead. You, if you guys have been following us for a while, you know that we always do something towards the end of the year. When everybody is slowing down, we start to speed up a little bit because we want to move into the new year feeling strong, feeling ready and know that we're kind of out of the gate straight away. And what this I've seen as a pattern does it helps us level up year on year on year as well which is, which is pretty cool so we've been doing a bit of a lean and strong challenge in the gym also so professionally um you guys you know that we've um, now got a couple of coaches on board with us we have been expanding our mission further and further into the workplace well-being space partnering with some incredible people that are fantastic at what they do which is allowing us to serve more people and to align with our mission to help people realize when they're healthy and well they can be a force for good in the world so we are so grateful for those partnerships. We've obviously got a second podcast on the go now. So if you're somebody that is uh, leading teams and you want to really, really leverage well-being in your workplace, then check out that podcast. It's called Thrive in the Workplace and Become a Force for Good. And our live monthly meetups are back as well. So we are getting together every month with our community, whether that be in Dubai or Abu Dhabi in person. So if you're here, let us know and we'll just make sure you're informed and you are more than welcome to join us for the next one. And, you know, the thing that I love the absolute most about what it is we do, and again, big accomplishments for, for this past year, is the work that we do with our clients. So, you know, our corporate clients are getting fantastic results. They're seeing that 
People are, are actually enjoying being at work for a change. They are feeling more vibrant and vital in being in that setting. They're feeling more confident. Emotions are a little bit more regulated. So, you know, our corporate clients that we're working with are really enjoying what it is we're offering and we're always doing our best to improve and same for our coaching clients as well you know it's very easy often as companies expand that they lose track of the people that have perhaps been there with them the whole time and one thing that Jonathan and I have always said since launching the wellness theory is we we never want to be those people we always want to make sure that everybody feels like they are our only client you know and um, we've got some fantastic feedback um, this year as well for, from our long-term clients that they've been experiencing that which which is really really like close to my heart and, and I'm, I'm just so proud of that so why am I sharing all of this with you right it's because because you ask us all the time like what you're up to what's going on so that's obviously one reason but also I share this with you because the reason we're able to achieve these things is one because we have clarity often at the start of every year and we sustain that clarity throughout the year as to what we want to be doing how we want to be showing up in life and in service with the work that we do but we also don't do it on our own right and this is something really really important so this year to achieve all of those things i've just mentioned i've worked with a therapist a sound healer a high performance coach business mentors a personal trainer an accountability partner um and you know, we've been doing this collectively, right, bit by bit. So it's so easy sometimes to listen to podcasts and to podcast hosts and you listen to them talking about different things in videos on Instagram and they show you all of the nice fluffy stuff, right? And I think it is inspiring to see and hear that. But at the same time, they don't always show you the whole story. So, you know, working with a therapist this year has really helped me to sustain a lot of the, the progress um, that I'd been making particularly in and around my ability to be at the same time as doing and to enjoy the ride um, sound healing every single week since I've been back in Abu Dhabi I've done my best to be there um, and that's just helped me to drop into my body make sure I'm moving and operating from a place where I feel centered because it's very easy to get sucked into the overwhelm of life these little things they really help to do that worked with um high performance coach again and just taking myself to another level in terms of productivity strategy clarity um same with regards to business you know we've been really thinking of different ways that we can change up our business model so that we have a, a stronger giving back piece to what we do we have been really elevating the partnerships that we've been working on and really cultivating those relationships and again these are all things that have come from learning from people that have walked the path before for our lean and strong challenge we've been working with a personal trainer um who's been keeping us on track when it comes to training and nutrition and encouragement praise where it's been needed a push where it's been needed um and uh one of uh, my accountability partners in particular um henry over in the uk has been amazing as well um at keeping me on track to some extent right and and being able to show up all the time and and follow through on what i say i'm gonna do so as you reflect on the past year it's always good to, to think about who has been key and pivotable pivotable pivotal in your progress because that i think is going to be super powerful because you can leverage that as you go into the new year um and obviously you know i haven't mentioned jonathan being obviously a big part of this of course he has um he's been working in his own way with different mentors and different people to be achieving what he wants to do as well right and one of the big um accomplishments in particular that john's been doing this year has been opening up a wellness facility here in abu dhabi on yas island um he's been consulting on that and and putting the team together and the facility together and he's been absolutely loving it and he's he's been doing that with a team right so what i guess what i'm really saying here is in essence like we can move from year to year and we can almost like hope that we're progressing but when we surround ourselves with community and we surround ourselves with people who can uplift us along the way, the easier it is to then see that progress and to feel that progress as well. So just something worth bearing in mind. So 
before I jump into how to set up your year, and I promise you I'm going to do that very shortly, is I want to just say a big thank you to you um, for listening to this podcast, whether it be on um, Spotify, Apple, um, or if you're watching these videos on YouTube as well, and you're catch catching the clips that we post on like Instagram and reading our posts on LinkedIn. Thank you so, so much. And particularly as well to our clients who we work with, who trust us and you know give us their time, give us their energy, you know, so that we can co-create this beautiful experience together of living happier, healthier lives, right? Because that's ultimately what we're here for. So as we move into the new year, please let us know what you want from us as well, because just ever since day one of launching the wellness theory, we've always, always, always said to you, like we're cur curating this whole experience for you. So let us know, what do you want? right? Because that's going to shape what our 2024 continues to look like as we move forwards as well. So from our side, for sure, you're going to have more stories and more strategy episodes on this Stress Relief in Your Pocket podcast and YouTube. And obviously we'll be uh, trickling in some wonderful guests in there as well, but there'll be more solo episodes this year compared to last. And we'll be just be adding as much value as we possibly can so that you can relieve stress, burnout, overwhelm, and just continue to live in high performance, happiness, and optimum health. All right. Also, you can be a force for good, right? Because we're all about paying it forward. When you feel good, that elevates to the people around you. And this has been a tough year. If we look at 2023, it has been tough, like collectively, when we look at some of the crazy, horrendous things that have been going on this year, it'd be very easy, wouldn't it, for us to almost give up. And, and I know there's been this, this vibe of hopelessness, right, because of some of the crazy things that happen in, 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 the, in the world. And this theme of hopelessness, it doesn't have to remain. Yes, there are, it feels like the world is on fire at times, right? Quite literally. But we have to remember that the only way that we move through these fires and through these horrendous times is if we can look after ourselves in such a way that we can show up and actually have a positive influence. I'm not saying you're going to fix everything. But what I am saying is that when we look after ourselves, we can then actually have the resource we need to help look after others, right? And, and rise together. All right. So as promised, I'm going to get off my bandwagon now. And I am going to talk to you about setting up 2024. So you probably already know that I do not really believe in New Year's resolutions. I believe in them for the people that commit and that, that have conviction but I think that's more of a decision rather than a resolution okay so I don't particularly love smart goals either and most of you know what smart goals are right when we're making them specific measurable achievable realistic and, and time sensitive or time driven you know and because for me they're a bit too formalized right a lot of times when I speak to clients about goal setting you know it reminds them of work or it reminds them of like a process rather than a fluid strategy and what we want if we're really going to grow is to yes have some kind of like guardrails like have some ideas of where it is we want to go but let's not put ourselves too much into a box all right so what I really love is is something called the stretch method and this is where we are stretching ourselves beyond what we thought we were capable of doing before in a way that keeps you centered and grounded in who you are and who it is you want to continue to become and this method is um, inspired by one of my high performance coaches, JP DeVilliers. I've spoken about him on multiple podcasts um, based in and around some of the stretch goals I've done. One of which was last year, the 150 kilometer kayak challenge around three Thai islands. This was a result of the method that I'm going to share with you today. And the lean and strong body transformation challenge that Jonathan and I have been doing this year, again, has come as a result of this as well. So this is just a series of simple questions. OK, simple questions that you can answer in your own time. You're welcome to follow along to this podcast, hit pause, answer and then continue. But take a little bit of time. You know, I would really, really encourage you to take yourself off to, to somewhere that you feel really at ease, somewhere where you feel inspired. It might be a coffee shop. It might be to the park. It might be doing this as you go for a walk. It might be you sitting down on your meditation cushion. It might be you laying in bed. It might be you getting cozy on the sofa. Um, whatever it looks like to you, set yourself up so that you're in a space and you're in a space of mind where you can really be reflective and decisive. Okay. 
So the first question, right, is if you had to pick one thing that would improve your life, your work, your health, you can choose any life area or you can choose all of them, right? What would it be? If you had to pick one thing that would improve your life in one or all areas, what would it be? I'm going to use one of my goals for 2024 as an example for you here. So I need to answer this for yourself. But for me, if I had to pick one thing that would improve my life, my work, my health, my, my sense of belonging in this world, it would be expression. Right. So it's just a, an area of my life where I feel like I can do better. I feel like I can I can do more. Right. So I know I know that if I focus on one thing, if I focus on expression only. What would change? How would my life improve? Right. So expression is the one thing that I would pick. So for you, if you had to pick one thing that would improve your life, your work, your health, what would it be? So now you've got your one thing that is going to improve one or multiple areas of your life. Ask yourself, how can you stretch yourself in this way in 2024? Right. And think just big picture ideas. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Right. So for me, some big picture ideas of how I can stretch myself in the way of expression for 2024 is mastering stillness and times of quiet. Because I know for me to reclaim my focus in order to be able to express clearly, I need time that is outside of the craziness of life, right? I know that I need to be connected and centered for me to be able to express myself authentically and efficiently. So mastering stillness is one of my big picture ideas, right? Another big picture idea for me here would be to do things that allow me to express freely. So writing, speaking, painting, moving my body through like exercise or, or um, dance. Right. These are different ways. Right. Big picture ideas of how I can express freely. Another big picture idea for my focus point of expression would be to be in the world and not of the world. Right. This is a little bit like mastering the, the stillness and the silence but it is about not being sucked into the daily to-do list right it's more about being present because when I'm present I can express myself if I'm recording a podcast like this I need to be truly present so that I don't kind of start thinking about all the things I need to do this afternoon or I don't start thinking about a million other directions I can go in I need to stay present right I need to be in the world. I don't need to be of the world and the craziness that's around it. So that's just another big picture idea that I can relate to that will, I know will help to stretch me in the form of expression. Now, once you've answered that question, how can you stretch yourself in this way with some big picture ideas? Right? Once you've answered that question, you need to move on to the third question, which is, what stretch milestones can you achieve so that you can show yourself completion? So this is almost like the proof that you've achieved it. So when you look back this time next year, if you follow through on what you said, you can say, yeah, I did this thing. I did this big thing. I did this cool thing. Right. What would that be? So for me, my example the one thing that I want to improve is expression. One of the big picture ideas I have to help me improve my level of expression is to be in stillness more and times of quiet. So one of the stretch milestones I have that I will be able to look back on next year is to know that I've actually attended two more of my Vipassana meditation retreats. Right. So that I, and so that I can have it in my diary. Right. It's a milestone that I can I can tangibly see. One of my goals, right, or one of my big picture ideas to improve expression 
was to express freely right in my body and one of the ways that I connect with that self-expression is when I'm outdoors right in nature it sparks the ideas of expression and the things I want to say it gives me clarity right and moving my body does the exact same thing so in 2024 I'm going to be doing with Jonathan the seven trails in seven days of Snowdon in the UK Right. So this is a, a stretch. I've never done the seven trails in seven days in terms of hiking. But what I, did, I have had, I've done one trail. Right. And and I did the three peak challenge about 10 years ago where you do three peaks in 24 hours. But I've never done seven trails in seven days. So that is a stretch for me. And it is definitely a milestone because, again, it's in the diary It's significant. I have named it the seven trails in seven days. So it becomes a thing. Right. It's not vague. I'm not saying oh, I'm just going to move my body more. I'm saying, no, I'm going to go and I'm going to do seven trails in seven days because the outdoors, spending time in the outdoors sparks creativity and expression for me. It helps me move my body and create expression through my body. It helps me feel free so I can express freely. Right. I hope you get in the gist. Um, and another example for me, you know, expression. One of the other things I said about expression, expressing freely is um perhaps painting right so I love to paint and I love to write but I haven't done that consistently for a long time so one of the stretch milestones I have is to make some art right physically make some art I haven't done that once in 2023 and I miss it so much and it's a form of expression for me so one of the milestones I have that I'm going to be able to tangibly see is if I have a painting in front of me or if I have a journal full of writing in front of me like creative writing you know so again this is just another stretch because it's something that is going to stretch me because I haven't been doing it for so long it's going to be a step out of my comfort zone to lean into that practice again Right. So these, again, are just ideas. You could they can be big for you. They can be small for you, but they need to be linked. OK, so just to summarize again, we pick one thing that we can improve and then we decide how can we stretch ourselves in this way? What are some of the big picture ideas? And then what are the stretch milestones that we can achieve so that we can show ourselves the outcome and the completion of it? So once you have that, right, you can then answer the last few questions, okay, which is then what needs to happen to make this happen, right? This could be daily, weekly, or monthly. So for me, one of my stretch milestones is to attend two of the Vipassana meditation retreats throughout 2024. Now, one of the things I need to do to make that happen is I need to practice sitting in stillness, if not every day, which is what I would love to do, at least every week, right? So that's what I need to make happen in order to be able to achieve that efficiently. To train for the seven trails in seven days, I need to make sure that strength training happens, that hiking happens, that stretching happens, that resting happens, right? So what needs to happen for you to make your stretch milestones happen. The next question, what boundaries do you need? In order to make those things happen, what boundaries do you need? For me, in my example, I need some phone boundaries. I've spent far too much time on my devices this year compared to what I would like. I need to make sure that I have boundaries around the times that I'm going to bed so that I can wake up early and have these pockets of quiet and still time before the day, the day gets going. I need to make sure I have boundaries around my work timing so that I make time to play, paint, express, write, hike, train. I need to make sure I say no to work to say yes to my goal of expression, right? And then the last question here is what resources do you need what resources or support do you need to make those things happen? So for me, um, I might need a guide for the seven trails in seven days, right? Jonathan and I, we can get fit and we can get strong. We know that piece, right? But do we know the, the, the intricacies of hiking the seven trails in Snowden? No, we don't. Maybe we need a guide for that. 
right? Maybe we need to remember how to map read properly, right? And maybe we need to learn to use a compass. I, I don't know yet, right? But well, what are those resources specifically? Um, the resources that I would need to be able to take um, two trips for the Vipassana retreats and a trip for the UK to do the seven trails. I need support within my business so that I can step out of the business, right? So they're resources that I need. I need to have systems in place. That's a resource. I might need to have people in place. That's a resource. Physically, right? To sit quietly for my goal of being able to sit and, and reclaim my focus, I need physical space to sit quietly in a place that's free from distractions. That's a resource. For me to make art, I'm going to need resources like paint or journal or a pen or a pencil, right? What are you going to need? Think about these things in advance, okay? Um, once you've gone through that line of questioning, really do take some time to think about the boundaries and the resources because then they're, they're often the two things that trip us up from actually being able to achieve what we want. And when you choose your one thing that you want to improve, you can then use that one thing as what we call an anchor word to keep you focused on one thing and so that you don't forget this after a couple of weeks, right? So my word for 2023 was depth, right? To go deep, go deep into study, go deep into our business, go deep into relationships. And all of those areas of my life have improved as a result of anchoring into that one word, depth. That is what it allowed me to achieve all of the things that I shared at the start of this podcast. And I was able to just see that one word, whether it be on the uh, screen of my phone, whether it be in the front of my journal, you can put it anywhere you want to, but a reminder that that's your focus. Because in this world, we can think so widely and get so distracted that we forget what we even set out that we wanted to do in the first place right? So common. So what is your anchor word? It will be the same as the one thing that you pick that you would like to improve upon, right? So my anchor word for the year ahead is expression, right? So whatever I do, the essence behind all of it will be expression, okay? So I'm just going to read those questions without my examples in between now for you so that you have them very clearly. Number one, if you had to pick one thing that would improve your life, your whole life, or multiple areas of your life, what would it be? Two, how can you stretch yourself in this way for 2024? Write down some big picture ideas. Three, what stretch milestones can you set to achieve so you can show your self-completion? Step four, what needs to happen to make these happen daily, weekly, or monthly? Step five, what boundaries do you need? And step six, what resources do you need? I hope that is useful for you. I can promise you, if you follow these steps, and you don't have to do it perfectly. You just have to do it, right? Because we can't do this activity if we haven't reflected on the thing that we want to improve on, right? So we, we have to have this like reflection, self-awareness piece. And then even if you write this down once and you never look at it again throughout the whole year, your subconscious is going to go to work on achieving it for you, which is an incredible thing. Yes, it helps for sure if you can dial it in and, you know, be then strategic and place the the stretch milestones in your schedule and you can you can work backwards from this information practically but even if you just think it through and write it down that is already going to move you forward in the way you want to improve for the year ahead okay because as i said earlier we always want to keep on growing right if we're not growing we're stuck or we're feeling like we're losing something often ourselves and you don't deserve that you deserve growth you deserve vitality you deserve authenticity you deserve joy you deserve to be able to make a difference in this life in the way that you want to and to live in a fulfilled way so if you've got any questions on this any questions at all please reach out anytime you know where we are and um, 
just drop us a, a message either on LinkedIn, whether it be on Instagram, whether you drop us an email at info at the wellness theory.com, you'll be able to find us. Okay. We are here for you, whatever you want, whatever you need for the year ahead, reach out. And if we can't provide that for you and, and co-create with you for that, we will make sure we help you find the next step of what it is you need, whether it's working with one of our partners, whether it's us helping you find somebody brand new, whatever that is. We're here, as always, by your side. If you need anything at all, please reach out. Until next year, I will be thinking of you. Enjoy the uh, New Year's celebrations. It's going to be my birthday on the 1st, um, so it's always a fun time for me, and I really hope it is for you as well. All right, the best gift you could give for yourself as you move into a new year and through this festive season is to take these times to just reflect and know that the future is in your hands, even when the world feels like it's on fire, even when you feel like you're already smashing it, there's always something else being revealed for you to just continue to grow with. Take care, be well, and see you soon.